No, listen, I don't feel that. I, I just want to think about the next game and, and until the game's run out for the team trying to catch us. Um, they've got four games left. They can get 12 points. They're on 82. They can get 94. We're on 90. We need four more points because the goal difference is significant. And so we have to win Tuesday. And if they keep winning, we have to get a point somewhere. And um, let's keep going and, until... You know they don't win a game or something and um, well let's wait and see for us we, we want to finish with as many victories as we can it would be great for this club to finish top of the league and yet obviously Wigan and Shrewsbury are both fighting and um, let's just see where we finish it with that spirit there's no reason to think we can't win every game oh my precious my very precious you're so special we're all so close I could taste you I could taste you but I can't not yet it's too early just a little bit too early. Tuesday could be the day. Yes, Tuesday. Because if we win against Doncaster Rovers, we're going back to the championship at the first attempt. We'll talk about the Doncaster Rovers, Blackburn Rovers game next. Another match preview this time, counting down to the penultimate away game of the season. That's right, Doncaster Rovers up against Blackburn Rovers. We'll talk about that match in just one second. But if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Now, the unthinkable has happened on Saturday. That's right, third place Shrewsbury needed a win against bottom club Berry to really put the, put the pressure right back on us. But they failed to do that, only managing a 1-1 draw against the bottom Bottom club, Berry, who already relegated back to League Two. So, it's not done and dusted, but that result has had some uh, repercussions at the top of the table. Wigan have been promoted, but hey, we'll talk more about that situation because it's not done and dusted. The title race is still on the cards, but we'll talk more about the, the implications that result uh, has had on Blackburn Rovers. We are still... Uh, seven points clear now of Shrewsbury with nine points on the table. So basically, the bottom line is if we do beat Doncaster Rovers, we will join Wigan back into the championship. Anyway, let's, let's build up to that match and take a look at it in a little bit more detail. The match will take place on Tuesday, the 24th of April at the Keep Moat Stadium. Last season, Doncaster Rovers finished third in League Division 2. Uh, they currently find themselves in 14th place with a couple of games in hand. Uh, the top goal scorer is John Marquise with 15 goals and the man pulling the strings is Darren Ferguson now. So over the years, two sides have met 22 times in all competition. Blackburn Rovers winning 13 of them, Doncaster Rovers winning 3 and the two sides have drawn 6 times over the years. Now the last 5 matches at the keep moat looked like this last time out. Doncaster Rovers picking up a 2-0 victory and that was in the championship back in or 60 before was 2013. If you go back one match further, it was a 5-1 spanking by Blackburn Rovers at the keep moat. And that was all the way back in 1958 in the old League Division 2. Now, top of the pops, uh, we also picked up a 3-1 away victory again. That was all the way back in 1954 on the 25th of the 25th of December. Was that possible? So um, uh, That's a bit of a questionable uh, statistic. But also, I want to uh, bring attention to the, the, the first time that these two sides met this season. And that was back at Ewood. And they won 3-1. I think that was the second game of the season. And, um, yeah, we're, we're hope we are still licking our wounds a little bit after that. Because they are only one of, what, five, five sides that have beaten Blackburn Rose this season. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a positive um, track record at the keep moat. But, obviously, the last time out, it's still... Still a uh, defeat, so let's try and rectify that. And also get the three points. That will do the job and get us promoted. Anyway, let's take a look at the my predicted starting 11 for Doncaster. Marosi in goal. Uh, what's his name? Paul Cook, the uh, Wigan manager's favourite player. Allcock, Baldry, Butler, Mason, McCulloch, Congolo, Blair, Whiteman, Marquise and May. Let's take a look at the statistics. Uh, Marquise tops pops with 15 goals. Rose in there with eight. Whiteman's in seven. And May has six. Marquise also tops pops. With the most yellows for the season, 11. Then Whiteman's in there with 8. Houghton's got 8. And Wright has 7. As for the Reds, nobody's got a red card thus far uh, for Doncaster Rovers. Let's take a look at the last five matches for Doncaster Rovers. Last time out at home, they were they lost against Oxford. 
before that, they were held to a 3-3 draw, also at home against Bottom Club Berry. Uh, 14th of April was the last time they picked up a victory. A 2-1 away win at MK Dons. 7th of April, they were held to a 0-0 draw up against Gillingham. And all the way back, Friday the 30th of March, they beat GB's Blackpool at Bloomfield Road. Now let's take a look at how Blackburn Rovers, I think, will line up. Ryer in goal, Bennett, Lunderhan, Mulgrew, Williams, Evans, Dax, Smallwood, Armstrong, Payne and Graham. Yes, my man of the moment, uh, uh, Jack Payne. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of him, but that spot in the 11 is up for grabs, to be honest with you. And I know there's only a few games left in the season. Conway's not really done enough. Antonson's not done enough. Samuel's not really done enough. Payne's not done enough. I think Payne should get the start. Uh, to give just just basically this this will be his last chance for me. I don't think I don't know it's a, it's a big occasion. It's a possibly a big occasion. It's the match that could seal us back into the championship, and the, and the guys on the pitch will get a lot of credit for that. So um, uh, you know Conway probably deserves a bit of fanfare as well. He's a veteran of the uh, of the of the crew, but you know I think if I if I was the manager, which I'm not, um, I would give it to Jack Payne just just for my last. Last throw of the dice with Jack Payne because I think if he doesn't deliver uh, in this match, I think that rules out any possible return to Ewood Park next season. Let's take a look at the statistics. Bradley Dax, daily double last time out, uh, adds to his tally 19 goals for the season. Also, Danny Graham also adds one to his tally 17 goals for the season. Try Mulgrew with a big fat OG does not detract from what he's scored so far 13 goals. He did give us a bit of uh, nerves, but he's done, he's done enough. Uh, and in fourth place is Adam Armstrong with nine goals into the discipline. Smallwood has ten yards, Bennett has eight, Evans has eight, Williams has seven, as for the Reds, Bennett still top spot two Reds, Simon with one, and Lewis Travis has won into the last five matches. Looks like this. Finally, Rovers picked up a, a, uh, a, a, a win after back-to-back -back draws. In, f in fact, it's been pretty sloppy as of late the last five matches, bar the second half against Peterborough have all been pretty shady. But anyway, last time out, we did beat Peterborough 3-1 at Ewood Park. Before that, we were held to a 1-1 draw against Bristol Rovers at the Memorial Stadium. Uh, all the way back Tuesday, the 10th of April, we were held to a board draw against Gillingham. Back in 7th of April, we beat Southend United at Ewood Park. And all the way back 2nd of April, that was a Monday, 2-1 away winners at MK Dons. Now let's take a look at the run-ins for the sides. Obviously, we mentioned that at the top of the show. Wigan Athletic are already back in the championship, but the championship race is still on the cards. And I think they do have a bit of a tricky run-in. Uh, they will end the season uh, against uh, this week's opponents, Doncaster. But they start the, uh, the, the build-up up against Bristol Rovers. Now, I don't expect Wigan to win this one. Uh, they might pull off a point. They might get a point. But I think Bristol Rovers might just, just you know, I think there'll, there'll be a, a few more hangovers, perhaps, for Wigan after celebrating their return. So I think Bristol Rovers will be, uh, do one against uh, Wigan, and that'll give us a bit of an opportunity to sneak back into the title race. Meanwhile, they also take on AFC Wimbledon. That match is uh, still... A bit of bit of concern for Wigan because AFC Wimbledon are scrapping themselves at the bottom of the table. And again, they might have taken their foot off the gas a little bit. Um, and I think Wimbledon might, might give them a game. And they'll wrap it up up against Doncaster Rovers. And we never know what happens in the last game of the season. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put my, 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 my cards on the table here. And I would say they are going to get four points from the last three games. Which will put them on 97 points. That's for Blackburn Rovers, I believe confidently that they will win against Doncaster Rovers. Then they will pull off a point against Charlton Athletic and then they're going to wrap it up with a win up against Oxford. And that will give us seven points, uh, which will put us on 97 points, uh, which would mean they would shade it on goal difference. Well, unless we stonk one of them, but I doubt it. Anyway, moving forward, Shrewsbury, pretty much I think they've blown their chances and they have a massive uphill task up against Peterborough. We're trying to keep their playoff dreams alive. And right now, they have uh, six points shy of the playoff spots. And basically, they need to beat Shrewsbury to get themselves back into contention for that. Because a win would put them in 94 points. Plymouth also had a bit of a stumble, but they've got a couple of games in hand. So, Shrewsbury will take on Peterborough midweek. Then they'll take on GB's Blackpool at Bloomfield Road. And then we'll wrap it up with a match up against MK Dons, who are fighting for the lives at the bottom of the table. But they could be well relegated by that point. Let's take a look at the match results that have affected the table. Obviously, we beat Peterborough on Thursday night in front of the Sky Cameras. 3-1 winners. Uh, Charlton, they kept up their recent uh, good bit of form. Obviously, they beat uh, Shrewsbury not so long ago, but they were held. Uh, they also took out 
Portsmouth to give themselves a real good boost for themselves going into fifth place now in the table. Plymouth, their playoff tracks, uh, playoff promotion push has had a bit of a wobble as they were beaten 2-0 by Northampton, give themselves a little bit of hope. Wigan smash Fleetwood 4-0 to get them over the line. And Shrewsbury, yeah, it is. Bottom of the shot there. 1-1 draw up against bottom club Berry And Rotherham also continue their uh, recent bit of form uh, to keep their playoff push alive. Now let's take a look at the fixtures that are going to be taking place during the midweek. Uh, the ones of, of concern, obviously, Bristol Rovers up against Wigan. Doncaster against ourselves. And Shrewsbury up against Peterborough. Also, Plymouth are in action up against Rochdale. And Bradford City up against MK Dons. Now, Bradford... I would say their promotion push is over. They're, you know, they're going to need to win their remaining four games, which would put them on 70 points um, if they're going to stand any chance. But I don't see that happening. Uh, Plymouth, they also have uh, four games, 12 points on the table. They could still get themselves in the playoffs. So um, their matchup against Rochdale is pretty mega for both teams involved. So there's a, a lot, of, lot to be decided and a lot, a lot of the fates of the clubs and the promotion and the relegation can be decided on Tuesday night. And hopefully uh, one of the key factors will be that second promotion and that will be hopefully Blackburn Rovers, fingers crossed. They've heard a little bit what I have to say about the match. What did the gaff have to say shortly after the final whistle against Peterborough in an extended Talking Heads? Yeah, listen, I'm fine. It's... Um... Because I believe in the in the, the spirit the team's got and the camaraderie they bring, I, they'll never lay down and accept defeat. I think uh, it was a real tough first 45 minutes against a very good side and I um, thought they had a lot of pace in the forward areas and tonight they asked questions behind our midfield players. It was a question you know, of not wanting to change it really because I wanted to trade the game and thought that our strikers would score more than their strikers. and. Um, and so it was a bit end-to-end. -end. We did have chances, they had chances for staff, and yet second half we uh, we managed to smother their opportunities, really, and um, and got on the front foot. And with the help of the supporters, it must be mentioned, they were fantastic tonight. We um, we got the result we were hoping for. Yeah, I think so. I think something that's what has to happen. And why does it happen? Because the group care about each other, they work hard for each other, they, um, they don't accept defeat. and. Um, and they made a connection with the fans tonight, second half, I thought, and, and it was really impressive to see. Um, and, you know, the dressing room is a good place to be in, and yet they have to rest well now. We've got to eat and drink and sleep properly and uh, get ready for Tuesday. Yeah, listen, I have to say, you, you've been at the games the first time in three, I think, is the last two games he's been pretty poor, and he's been. We've had a good chat, and we've talked about it, his performance level, and, you know, how he's got to look after himself. and. Um, and he, listen, he's a great kid. Why I don't get overly excited when Bradley has a bad game is because he loves the game, he loves football, he gets wrapped up in football matches, he wants to help this club and this team and this, his, uh, his, his teammates win football games and, um, and, he, and he helped us do that tonight, of course. Yeah, listen, Danny's always a bit of a dilemma for me, really, because I see him at 60 minutes and sometimes he looks as if he's treading water. You know, he's, he's, he's not 22 anymore. He's, um, he finds the going hard and yet, you feel as if, particularly at home, you feel as if he's going to score a goal or he's going to make a goal or he's going to out-physical a centre-half and someone's going to drop. And, um, so we kept him on tonight. It was tempting to put Dominic down the middle, but we, um, we put Dominic out wide, left Danny on and it paid dividends in the end. So that's why there's a consistency of selection. I've got some fantastic footballers who are kicking their heels, not getting a game and, um, and yet you have to go with your... In these, pressure situations you have to rely on Mulgrew and Graham and Evans and Bennett and Williams that you have to rely on them and they so they play every game and every week and uh, that hopefully they'll get us over the line I, I, I thought they did amazingly well what it, what it icing on the cake because at 2-1 you're always thinking we, you know we're a second away from losing a goal and um, and yet of course it's just a huge relief it drains out of you and it's fantastic that the team got that result it's in the bag the points are there and we have to just move on as I said eat, drink, sleep properly the next few days and get ready for Tuesday. I think probably the best, I think, you know, there was, to be honest, at the end of last season there were some amazing atmospheres as well when we were digging in trying to get results and um, it just shows me what Hillwood Park can be on nights or days where, you know, I, I, I just said to someone there, could you imagine if we were getting over 20 odd thousand in here and the noise it can generate if the team's on the front foot and attacking and it's, it was quite amazing the night to listen to the energy coming from the stands and I look forward to hopefully many years of, of, of Ewood Park being bouncing and, uh, and enjoying their football and seeing a winning team. No, listen, I don't feel that. I, I just want to think about the next game and, and until the game's run out for the team trying to catch us. 
Um, they've got four games left. They can get 12 points. They're on 82. They can get 94. We're on 90. We need four more points because the goal difference is significant. And so we have to win Tuesday. And if they keep winning, we have to get a point somewhere. And um, let's keep going and, until you know they don't win a game or something. And um, well, let's wait and see. For us, we we want to finish with as many victories as we can. It would be great for this club to finish top of the league and yet obviously Wigan and Shrewsbury are both fighting and um, let's just see where we finish it. With that spirit there's no reason to think we can't win every game. Now you've heard what the captains are saying, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say, what the fans have been saying on social media. Let's take a look. In fact, before we take a look, nothing's been going on on social media because they're still talking about the Peterborough game. But over on the BRFCS forum, there was many, many folks talking about it. If you haven't checked out the forum, make sure you do so. Link to the uh, forum is in the description below. Anyway, JH Rover said this. Do our job here and we are as good as there, regardless of what Shrewsbury do in their games. If the Peterborough of last night turned up at Shrewsbury on Tuesday, then I doubt they'll win that one. Even better, if Berry pull off a surprise result, only worry is that by Tuesday, Peterborough might not have anything to play for if results go against them on Saturday. But Berry did pull off a bit of a result, so it's on us, baby. All we got to do is beat Doncaster and that racket is the lunatic upstairs Luna anyway Aussie Dave said this I think we'll pan them 3-1 after Thursday yeah, I think the confidence is going to be flowing again that for me was the most important game of the season selfish me wants us to go up next week though after a day on the pop driving on Tuesday as for Clayton's left book uh, a boot a win and we're up get those tickets bought people obviously these are posts now more recent after the Berry result, Big Dog Steel, we are going up Tuesday regardless of our result. Peterborough will beat Shrewsbury and I think we will win anyway. R Rivage Blue said this, win on Tuesday and it's party time. Had tickets for the original day and wasn't particularly looking forward to training down on a Tuesday night. But should be well worth, this, well worth it now. As for FGS5635, this is the game we go up now. No way Shrews beat that posh side. As for Speedy's going to get you. Bring it on, Tony and team. Make my Tuesday night an automatic promotion night. Hashtag, come on, you blues. Uh, Cherry Blue said, hope we will fill big parts of the ground on Tuesday night and dominate both pitch and ground areas. Promotion doesn't happen all that often, so let's make this a night to remember. We've got Tony Mowbray. Tony Mowbray's taking us up as for Chaddy Rovers. Let's win this game and win promotion, please. Tony Mowbray and players. Now, over the years, a number of players have played for both Doncaster Rovers and Blackburn Rovers. Here are three of them. Who remembers this guy? I do, Tommy Spur, uh, former left back, now playing his trade, I think, at North End. He used to play for Blackburn Rovers and he also used to play for Doncaster Rovers. I think that's where we snatched him. Uh, who remembers this guy? Another left back, Pascal Chambonda, formerly of our bitter League One rivals, Wigan Athletic. He also donned the blue and white hearts for Blackburn Rovers and he also donned the red and white stripes for Doncaster Rovers. Who remembers this guy? Former Liverpool player and also former Blackburn Rovers player, ex Senegal uh, international, El Hadj Juff. He also donned the red and white stripes for Doncaster Rovers. Now, if you want to check out a full list of all the players that have played for both Doncaster Rovers and Blackburn Rovers, head over to my WordPress site. Links to that uh, bad boy is in the description below. Now, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. You've heard what the fans and the gaffers had to say about the match. All of that does not really matter. What really matters is what Caster Cat thinks will happen between Doncaster and Blackburn Rovers. Let's take a look. <laughs> That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. So this puppy, I'm going to put that bad boy on ice for Tuesday night because that's when that sucker's coming out, and we're going to be we're going to be we're going to be toasting a well-earned promotion because we deserve it. We don't deserve to be in this division anyway. All we need is one win in the next three games to seal the deal. But hopefully, it's Tuesday night because. Let's just get it done. Let's get it done and enjoy the last couple of games and then maybe maybe make a cheeky wee push for the championship. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First and foremost, take care of business on Tuesday against a pretty stubborn Doncaster side who beat us at Ewood Park. So we owe them a victory anyway. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.
Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.